Today I wanted to talk about woofers. Uh, people keep asking me what are woofers and these are people that are actually in the area where there are a lot of woofers. But if you were not in the circumstance to actually encounter uh, woofers you wouldn't know because up until the point when I moved to northern New South Wales tried to find a um, accommodation and that's when I was asked are you a woofer and the first time it was like no what the hell is a woofer now every time you're asked that question and you say because most of them don't actually define it very well they just say that they're um, international people on a tourist visa or a working visa and they need to perform certain numbers of hours per week to actually maintain that visa and stay in Australia but ultimately it comes from worldwide opportunities of organic organic farms woof and a woofer is someone that has signed up to go around the world to different opportunities that exist in organic farms. Now this is actually a twofold effect on the Australian economy and one that actually Pauline Hansen raised is that there is virtually now no ability for any Australian to actually get a job on a farm because woofers are taking up these jobs and those people that are wanting to really utilize this free labor well it is free because all they have to do is provide a roof over their head and a meal a day and so many they have to contribute so many hours in exchange for that but they are for the most part overworked and overused and that's why there are those that are really trying to profit out of what little bit of land that they've got to try and classify themselves as a farm so that they can use woofers rather than paying people to actually do that work so when you uh, classify yourself as a farm you can then sign up to become a, a host for woofers so that you can get woofers in. Now to get a woofer you need to provide them accommodation. Now at NICAP on Minjimbal they have made mention that they want to use woofers which means they have to have woofer accommodation and they also have to provide them food. So they have to have a certain number of facilities and the reason why I'm explaining this is because anyone in the Mount Burrell area knows that the caravan park has been stripped bare and ultimately there is what I believe that they will be bringing in cabins to provide for woofers that will actually work on the nightcap on Minjimbal land. This works for two benefits for them with them in the Mount Burrell commercial area in the caravan park they are actually separate from the community so that the com they can say that the community is kept separate and private with other facilities there they can also provide uh, the Sphinx Rock Cafe has got a kitchen so they can provide meals the caravan park has actually got amenities so they can provide all the basic amenities and the, the shop can offer um, well half of what its um, shelves are stocked people may be able to purchase them while it's still open <laughs> as it's barely struggling to keep the doors open if you can't even stock half the shop it's only a matter of time before the other half goes and you've got an empty shop and that makes no money when you've got nothing to sell so virtually in Australia it is very difficult for an Australian to actually get a job on a farm. They prefer woofers or people that come in on international visas. I know that in certain areas here in Tasmania there is a lot of Irish people 
that come over during harvesting times. And again, they are given preference over anyone that would want to do it in their own country. But because of this, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, because eventually there was one person when I moved to northern New South Wales that they said, no, we're after woofers, um, go away. And I left them my number and they gave me a call back and said, are you still interested? He was desperate for money and I thought, yeah, why not? We moved in there, there was no gas. The gas cylinder was empty, it wouldn't work. We couldn't get the oven to work. We couldn't get the um, shower to work. There was virtually no water that would actually run out of the, t the taps. And there was no locks for uh, the $200 a week I was paying to protect even our privacy. And I say that because it was clear after we had gone out that when we came back, all of this new things of ours had been moved. So much so, that I set up a camera to record the video until we got back to see whether this this man actually did violate our privacy, walk into our place that we're paying for, for nothing that works, and go through our things. And that's exactly what he did. Now, as you start to talk to woofers that have actually had experiences around the different farms, um, there are some rather horrifying revelations that are made about what goes on and how much especially women are used and abused in a predatory situation where a single male that seems to have the inability to form valid relationships in the, the world around him sets up, tries to set up some, I don't know, their own version of a rural or land sharing community and get like-minded people in. But then to achieve the outcomes that they actually want, because everybody at these things is all talk, talk, talk. None of them actually do anything. Well, some of them might do, but the ones I've experienced haven't. So they actually need people that will do the work. So if you provide them accommodation and a meal, you can get the woofers in. You can actually, it's all government legislated. It is a requirement by the government that they perform certain numbers of hours to stay in Australia. And if you become a recognised farm, which NICAP on Minjimbal call themselves a farm, and they would take, make every effort to classify themselves as a farm so that they could get woofers in. And again, that said, they need accommodation and they need a kitchen and they need amenities. And that is all provided in the Mount Burrell shopping area with the caravan park. So if you're in Australia and you've met a woofer, you know that they're a tourist. They're here on a visa. It's really that simple. The only Australian woofers would be in other countries where you line up in another country to go and do exactly the same thing in that country as what woofers are doing here, is to actually contribute to the agricultural and farming industry. So when it comes down to it, there are two big effects that the woofers have. One, it is very much detracting from the ability of any Australian citizen to actually get jobs in the agricultural industry as they go towards getting the free labour through the woofers. And the other is a reduced number of rental vacancies. Rather than renting out to locals, they will hold it open so that they can utilise um, the accommodations for woofers. Woofers are seasonal to a large degree, so even if they do rent it out, it will only be on a limited time frame, you know, a limited lease, six months if you're lucky. So it is creating a housing shortage in itself, as more and more of these people would convert their accommodations to satisfy 
housing woofers rather than housing locals. So as anybody knows and is promoted by NICAP on Minjimbal themselves that the Mount Burrell commercial area is owned by them. Which would actually be a little bit of a problem with the conflict of not being able to have the superannuation connected to the land and the community in any way, shape or form. But that's actually another issue that I'm not going to get into right here. I'm going to keep diving into the woofers because essentially the woofers are a desired outcome for Nightcap on Minjimbal. They've said this several times now. And in the use of woofers, they can actually get work done, which is a very hard thing to do when you've actually got community members there. All they do seem to do is sit and talk about what they, they would like to do, but nobody actually really wants to get up and do it. So, if you've got woofers, you've got someone to get the job done. And all you need to do is give them accommodation and a meal. You don't have to pay wages, you don't have to pay taxes, you don't have to pay superannuation contributions, you don't have to do any of that. It's an exchange under the law in a different way in Australia of getting labour for nothing. Dean Rodimer, who is one of those at Nightcap on Minjimbal, when I was living in the area, I used to see him frequently going into Nimbin and chasing up the woofers. It was not uncommon to go home with a woofer. And I thought that rather peculiar because Dean still lives in a caravan park. How could he possibly offer woofers in the accommodation or farm work in exchange for anything. But it's also a matter of making contacts and bringing in the woofers, getting it known to woofers that there are areas where if you go to this person they can try and get you some work with the different farms. So Dean Rodimer is very well versed in going out and bringing back woofers to get work done. Now, I want to dive into a few things here that, um, right, it involves property that um, NICAP on Minjimbal have made a contract with to purchase under a company name of 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited. That's Cherie Stokes. Now Derek Zillman and Cherie Stokes were the ones that actually negotiated the sale of this property. And when asked point blank, uh, do you have anything to do with Bulla Bulla or any of them over there now? They were told no. You see the people that are purchasing this in a company name wanted to remain anonymous and the vendor didn't find out until after the contract was signed that they are most definitely associated with them in well Derek Zillman and Cherise Stokes are in NCV Enterprises and all the other companies that have been started off as member businesses now, some of these member businesses are actually started off as a joint venture to manage another business, but I will get into them in another video. I want to focus on the Mount Burrell area here in the commercial area that they've now stripped the cabins away from. Now, the caravan park, they wanted to extend that out. I dare say so that they could have the woofers and the caravan park operating in the same place. However, in doing that, it would extend the caravan park down to the corner where it's a blind corner and it's not good for caravans. So no, not a good idea. And one thing that I had recently forgotten until I had been reminded of it is that the title that holds Mount Burrell Commercial actually 
goes along here and across the road sort of into there it's, there's a little square there and in that little square is the sewerage for the caravan park because the caravan park is by the river it needs to come back and that's where you'll find that the septic their grey water uh, dump area actually goes into this area over here away from the river now this area here that I've highlighted is the property that uh, NICAP on Minjimbal are now buying as another member business property or whatever and when this was first bought up last year it was something that I had pondered then were they going to make this a woofer area keep them separate from the rest of the community and then they don't have to worry about extending down here they can try and build the caravan park over here and access is also better because this is a, a small incline but not too bad for caravans to get up and it's also off a busy main access road so thereby there can be no problems with caravans accessing on the blind corner as they would have been doing if they had extended out down through here now this property here that they're purchasing in addition to everything else that they want to do with nightcap on Minjimbal is an overextension of their financial resources in the vicinity of 725,000 plus stamp duty and ultimately they are pursuing this very vehemently even when they have got such a tight cash flow problem they are struggling to to stock the shelves in the commercial they have virtually come to a standstill as far as any potential investors and they do owe both NCV and Mount Burrell commercial a considerable amounts of money because they used the rainmaker technique to actually get current investors to give them loans now some of those loans have been secured by shares that you can actually see and some of those are unsecured loans that may or may not be converted into more shares uh, under the conditions of the agreement that they made so I'd like you to remember and consider that by mid-May next year they have to come up with $725,000 to pay for this piece of land. If not, the vendor will not extend the contract. And also within that time frame I have cited an agreement whereby they have to pay Mark Darwin $150,000 by the 31st of March I'm not sure whether that has then been replaced by yet again another agreement where a deposit is made and a future payment date given I do not know that but one thing I do know that already 750,000 and 150,000 is nearly up to a million dollars and that's not even dealing with anything that's actually got to do with nightcap on Minjimbal. There is still 16 lots of Peter Van Leishouts that's owned by um, oh, Zimmerland that need to be paid for. And with a deposit plus the purchase price, let's just round that off to 10 million. So let's say that the deposit is one million dollars and that has to also be something that is paid within the next month or so so we're getting up to nearly two million dollars now but if you're a ratepayer in the Tweed Shire Council you would also know that your rates are due at the end of May if you pay them year in an annual instalment 
or quarterly uh, payments, you know that rates are due at the end of May. So I did a calculation, what are the rates? And it's quite handy because you don't even actually have to guess because there is um, a website where you go to and it gives you all this information. So this information is official and it's based on the valuation given by that the council actually uses for the rates calculation. The only one that is an estimate and it's done on the known uh, sale value has been the commercial. I did actually find a um, valuation for a hundred tenths too. There are three value uh, definitions given at the Tweedshire Council for Rates. One is residential, one is business and one is farming. Now in most circumstances I've used the residential and only in the Mount Burrell commercial area did I actually apply the um, oh, the business rates. Now over here on the left here is the actual valuer general. These are what is used by the council to actually do your rates on. Now of them, I won't show you all of them as you probably can't read them on the screen anyway. But the ones that I actually find interesting is Dolph Cook and the one that Dolph Cook, Peter Van Lyshout and Darko Kovac jointly own. The one that would actually have his industrial cannabis growing on it. There is where every one of them says that it is subject to evaluation each year and an annual review. That land that is attached to um, Dolph Cork, where he is conducting his activi activities, comes under 14A2, which is not part of an annual revaluation. So the gross value of the land has been kept at 295000 where all the surrounding land parcels actually have that annual re-evaluation done on it. And I don't know why, as I said, the only reason that I can imagine that this would be the case is that they've been applied for some kind of an exemption because of the industrial cannabis license that Dolph Cook holds. Now I might also point out that holding a, a license to grow industrial cannabis does not actually give you a medical license to practice and sell medicinal cannabis products or to run a university that, well, I'm looking at Dolph Cook's university as being something that was set up in the same manner as any type of foundation, non-government organisation that Mark Darwin was talking about. And I dare say Mark Darwin helped him set it up. And if that is the case, it's only a matter of time when it's actually looked at that they will find that this is just another area of tax dodge and whoever's been participating in it is going to get a huge tax bill and be lucky if they stay out of jail. So in addition to the 725000 to purchase this property, the million dollars that Peter Van Lyshout needs to be given a deposit for, or maybe that's in compensation for the rates because wait till, you, wait till you see the rates for those 16 lots. And 150000 for Mark Darwin. When both NCV Enterprises and Mount Burrell Commercial actually owe money in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So on the millions that they have to come up with already in the next couple of months, at least two million, what about the rates that also have to be paid at the end of May? 
Well, if you look at NCV Enterprises, who currently own 322, their annual rates valuation is on 883000 which is 354436 per annum, or 88609 per quarter. Now, I'm not making these rates up. This is the rates as are. So NCV Enterprises needs to come up with at least 80, let's say 89,000 just to pay the rates on this parcel, these two bits here that make up 3222. Once they purchase 23 to 27 Waratah, they will be adding another 47,000 per quarter to what they've got to come up with or 189,000 per annum in rates. That's a lot of money just on those two. But what about the 16 lots that they're buying off Peter Van Lyshout? The rates for those 16 lots per year is 1.9 million. For a quarter, 475000 That's a lot of money to come up with. And that's only based on the valuation of $4.7 I believe that the sale of the property is a lot more than that. Almost oh, under double, but nearly double. Then we have the really big grey area of the whole nightcap on Minjimbal. It's supposed to be one whole. So thereby, the components of that whole, there would also be rates due, which is Dolph Cook's, um, well, the, I call it his because that's where he set up his castle on the hill and his whole everything that he's doing. Darko Kovac, as much as I'm aware, I don't know whether he's got anything to do with it or not. And Peter Van Lyshout lives down over here on the other lot on Kemp Cove that is also for consideration for rates as well, is that if Nightcap on Minjimbal is all these properties and these rates are due every quarter, who is actually paying for them? I can only believe that NCV Enterprises, as representing the whole project, would also be paying the, these rates as well. It is part of the development, or are they going to say, no, it's not, these are paid by the owners. And I want you to listen to that, they are the owners of that land, and they will not give it up in any rural land sharing community. They, their intent would be to take what they own and select a few individuals that they can give permission to to build something in that little area but to just stay out of their way and, you know ultimately they're they're going to be people that they hand pick and I well there is no indication that these two titles will be bought in to be owned under the whole one thing of NCV Enterprises. It looks like it's going to be NCV Enterprises, Kemp Cove Proprietary Limited, which is for the Misty Mountains and Peter Van Lyshout over here, and the one that is jointly owned by Peter Van Lyshout, Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac, where Dolph Cook actually lives. So. I don't see how you can share in that when already there are multiple owners and there is no clear path on how these owners would relinquish any of their title over their lands that they've paid for. You might be able to give them some money so you can build there as part of this whole development, but ultimately they're not giving up control of that land. There is nothing indicated in DA 21-0010 that that would actually occur. The outcome would be then to take all these 21 lots and turn them into 10 plus the one for the village. And that includes these two. 
but they would also be segregating them into sections where they are separate from the rest of the community. There would be special conditions. These people that own this land now are not going to open it up to other people and unless it's under their conditions, not yours. There is no equality. It is not a democracy. It is a dictatorship. And if Dolph was the kind of welcoming person that, that wouldn't mind having other people around, he certainly wouldn't greet strangers with a gun. Could you imagine if you got a house there and someone got the wrong house and went to his house instead and went to knock on it and he comes out with a gun? That is totally unacceptable. Someone that greets you with a gun in their hand has got something to hide 100%. But anyway, if we get back to the rates, there is, on a quarterly basis, a lot of rates. The ones uh, at Dolph Cook's jointly uh, owned one, that is not going to go up from 295000 uh, It's not under subject to review, as I showed you. But all of these others are just going to go up. And that is a cost every quarter that is in the millions for all these properties that is 475 for 16 lots 88,000 for uh, one lot here oh well it is two but it's yeah then you've got a hundred per quarter for the Mount Burrow commercial a hundred thousand then you've got four forty seven thousand for the new one that they want to buy. I mean, this is per quarter. Millions of dollars. It calculates actually to be around 3.2 million per annum in rates alone. And that's a lot of money. Now, the interesting thing about that was when I asked Derek Zillman the question about, uh, have you informed investors that they could be up for millions per annum in rates. Now, he couldn't answer any of these questions because that's confidential information. <laughs> yeah, the ones that aren't confidential information. Simple question. Have you been upfront and honest about the ongoing cost of rates? It's a simple question. How much would each investor be expected to contribute? Well, you better hope that you've got a lot of investors because the more investors, the less that is of your share that you've got to come up with each year. But then it wouldn't be each year, it would be each quarter because each quarter the rates will need to be paid. So a lot of simple basic questions, full disclosure of uh, any basic details like exactly what income might investors expect from the businesses and is that going to offset any other costs like the all the rates and every year you're going to have to regrade certain parts of the dirt road because they're going to get washed out and then there's any other number of ongoing expenses of electricity wages because it is their intent as Adrian Brennock says we're going to employ all these people through the community to do these jobs they're going to source jobs from within the community so even when they say that they'll create jobs not for anybody but themselves they intend to, to create these little pockets of incel groups that are very much um, insular and keeping it within their own profits and ability for anybody to get a job outside of that co that nightcap on Minjimbal is going to be slim. Why would they employ someone to come from outside of the community when they can pay someone inside their community? They can put it through a system whereby they're not looking at having to do everything strictly by the books and they can, you know, 
give a little bit of cash and hand under the table, nobody will know any the wiser because it's paid out of an association and nobody knows what goes on in there. Anyway, there are multiple ways <laughs> of tax dodgers, embezzlement. I mean, seriously, these ones, as it keeps pointing out, hey, I like that comment where they, Justice Derrington actually said that these people at Nightcap on Minjimbal even failed to reach the level of rank amateur. That's a lot coming from a judge who actually, you know, he's looked at the stuff up they've made and everything that they've done. And, yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like watching some mothers do have them, isn't it? It's really damning for Nightcap on Minjimbal that the judge actually says that they can't even come up to the level of rank amateur. And it is in that rank amateurship now that they are being driven to buy this land over here when they can barely stock the shelves in Mount Burrell Commercial for the $3.7 million worth of shares that the company is supposed to be worth, they're worth zero. The company actually owes money and it can't stock its shelves. It can't pay for the cabins to actually be put back in the caravan park. There's five of them sitting in Queensland waiting to be delivered if only they'd pay for them. Again, this is all more money that they need to come up with on top of all the other things that I've just mentioned. Now, Nick from Dream Cabins, I took a, let's say that 85,000 is the average price for each one of those five that they owe Nick. That's hundreds of thousands again, that they're still owing. And for all intensive purposes, we've already heard how Adrian Brennock has well, his assets and liabilities statement is all smoke and mirrors, double it, quadruple it, triple it, whatever, you know, and he encouraged Phil Dixon to do the same. And they sent those assets and liability statements off to Derek Zillman, backed up by a letter from Peter Hetherington that said they are good customers and they can pay this money. Now, where they said that these low-dock loans were no longer possible, well, Mark Darwin said that in 2016, they have found their way round the low-dock loans. And I tell you what, they are really skating the thin edge of completely overextending themselves and completely falling flat on their face. And this is without even considering that it's still going to cost them money to pay their town planner to make all the amendments to even try and come close to any compliance with the development application. And if they did get approval for stage one works, then they need to come up with all that money to do the roads. When considering that they've almost fully utilised any database to create sales leads. There's not many options left open to them. People with uh, self-managed super funds are most definitely the people that they are trying to attract. This is in the Voxes where it is stated clearly that they know it's the only money people have to spend. So they're going to target your retirement funds for their use now. And they're going to sell you on this. And the sad thing is that your super funds are bust as far as getting anything back out of them. The more people that buy in, the more money that is owed on the promises of something bigger that cannot be fulfilled. When this falls flat, the only things that can be used for people to get money back out of are those that have actually holding shares in these companies and verified creditors or in some other way have legitimized their precedent to get paid over others. They will not 
actually have enough land assets to sell off to actually pay back all the millions and millions and millions that they owe people. Because currently, all they own is NCV Enterprises and the Mount Burrell Commercial Area. The Mount Burrell Commercial Area has completely been trashed. You would be lucky if someone took it off your hands for 500000 And everything they do to it has just devalued it more and more and more. So ultimately, it's not going to be something that all the people that are owed this round, there is not enough land. Well, they can't sell the land and businesses that they have for enough money to pay you all back. Not this time. Because there's too many and too much dollar values. As I said, they've overextended their financial capacities. NCV Enterprises and 3222 Kyogle Road is unencumbered because the debt that was incurred to pay for it is either taken up in shares or made through a separate agreement, a loan agreement that will be triggered by certain conditions. So that way there's no mortgage registered and the the land appears unencumbered, but it is certainly not debt free. It is encumbered through loans made that are held by shares, that there is an expectation that those shares as loans be paid back. There are also unsecured loans that the only thing they would have is a written agreement. There is, they aren't even secured by any share in a company that they could then attempt to get anything back out of. And at each place where there is an unsecured creditor with only an agreement, you're going to come bottom of the list and with the number of people that will end up making claims against the land assets of um, NCV Enterprises and Mount Borough Commercial, there's just going to be too many people owe too much money. They can't sell the land or the businesses for that much money. There's going to be a definite pro rata loss that each and every investor will take. Now, I could be incorrect when I say that they have overextended themselves financially. They may have all these people lined up with superannuation funds ready to pay into Mount Burrell Commercial so that it looks like that they're not actually part of the community even though buying into it is actually part of a, a member benefit. It's all attached together. They haven't segregated Mount Burrell Commercial from Nightcap on Minjimbal. It's part of it, and thereby it is also in breach of superannuation laws which state that the two actually can have nothing to do with one another. And nothing means nothing. It doesn't mean, oh, look, we'll just put that in a different member company name and say that it's got nothing to do with it. You all tie to each other. It's all there on paper. It's in the directorships, in the shares, and all the timing of moving everything, it, it, you just can't avoid it. Just like you can't avoid Adrian Brennock and Yepi, and when it is clearly dated he moved his shares. Right at the time of his final bankruptcy hearing. When he knew he was going to go bankrupt. But he's, no, nah, they're not going to get Yepi. I'm going to sneak it into my wife's name and uh, maintain control that way. And that's what he's actually done. If he hadn't maintained control, he would not even be there as a developer now. He would not be saying, we own the village. We own the town. It's not they, as in they, them, the employer. It is we, my fellow investors. 
Yes. Terminology is important, Adrian Brennock. So are words. When you stated that you owned the town jointly with other people, you actually admitted ownership in bankruptcy that you shouldn't have. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but my advice would be to NICAP on Minjimble to not overextend themselves with purchases that are irrelevant to the current development application. They should be focusing on the obligations that they already have without further extending to 725000 to buy this land, annual rates of 189000 That's adding to the cost, and this land is not part of the development. But I dare say it would make a really good location to put a new caravan park and the woofers that serve Nightcap on Minjimble can be down here in the cabins at the Mount Burrell Caravan Park. Well, what was previously the Mount Burrell Caravan Park. And they can then be taken to where they need to do their jobs or whatever uh, in the community. And then they can go back out. So they're never actually part of what's over here. And that's ideal for them because they, are, they love their secrets. Everything's a secret about what they do there. So having the woofers outside of the actual community boundaries, that is ideal. And it also doesn't give woofers any opportunity to have any real conversations. Um, well, they might engage the public around the Mount Burrell commercial area when they go into the shops and things like that. But they're also going to be, the locals will be deterred from being honest because, well, they're going to try and slap a, a lawsuit on you if you dare voice your opinion about what it's like to live in this area and what the people they're woofing for are like. And to warn them, especially the girls. You know, you've got to warn the girls because they are taken advantage of so much. And especially the European blondes. Yes, so... Uh, some of these males have quite a, a desire for them. And considering how they feel about women, it's not like they need consent because usually they just take what they want. They'll do what they want. This is their land, tribal laws, and, you know, you can't say anything. And why can't you say anything? Well you would actually be made to sign a confidentiality agreement that anything you saw on this land you weren't allowed to say anything about. Just like I dare say, as an investor, you are also likewise made to sign a confidentiality agreement. Why would you need to sign a confidentiality agreement for your home? That's what I would like people to consider. This is supposed to be your home. In any other circumstance, you would never be required to sign a confidentiality agreement. Like, what if your neighbours upset you and the course of actions that you had open to you, well, they were friends of the developers and ultimately it didn't matter how much you complained, nothing was ever going to change. You are working under the laws that they have dictated. And in the Voxes, Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin made it quite clear that PVL's land was going to be set up as a dictatorship. Fit in or fuck off. And that's, sorry to put it so bluntly, but that's actually what Adrian Brannock said. If you do not bow to the mindset, if you make any ripples, you can't object. They're going to come down on you and they're going to force you out. Because there is also that clause in there that says, you know, it's like strike three and you're out. The community can vote you out. So all, it, it, all it's going to do is create a lot of clicks and inattention with, well, they want to set up <laughs> all these little groups of like-minded people. Well, what if the vegans came across the carnivores and the carnivores 
didn't like the vegans because they're all just so rude and arrogant and up themselves. Well, not all of them are, but most of them actually. I've seen this young girl, she's the same age as my daughter and she looks nearly closer to my age. And she reckons she looks healthy. That is so sad. There is also a certain level of starving the brain cells that actually occurs with the, most of those that would actually classify themselves as vegans. And one of the things that, you know, when they say, oh, well, you know, you're not a baby cow, so you shouldn't be drinking milk. Well, you're not a plant, so you shouldn't be eating plants. It's that kind of mentality that they come out with it. It's almost like flat earther mentality. It's just, how can you... How can you state that? I don't want to kill the animals, but you don't mind killing plants. You know, there's, there's this distinction of how one life is more valuable because it's politically correct to be a vegan. Because when you're a vegan, then you actually show how much you care about the environment. Well, actually, all it shows is that you don't really care about the environment or understand the environment. It just means that you are willing to follow the crowd. And uh, yeah, a fleeced sheep. Now I'm just going to finish this off with the problem of what happens when Nightcap on Minjimbal or NCV Enterprises go to try to apply to the Tweedshire Council to actually produce 10 rural land sharing communities. If they achieved stage one works, it's going to actually take years to complete. By the time that is complete, Tweedshire Council will have removed themselves from the state environmental planning policy. And at that stage, there will be absolutely zero ability for NCV Enterprises to submit a development application to go any further. And this will be after they've tried to buy all this land and spend all this money that still they owe more than the assets can pay back. And, well, the only thing that's going to make any difference now is between the time when they do close down Nightcap on Minjimbal for good because they cannot proceed with it is how many more people will invest money? How many more hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars will be booked up against land that they don't even actually own? They only have owner's consent to use this land. They do not actually own the land. And to sell land that you don't own carries a very big risk. And it carries an even bigger risk if you invest in a speculative promise that they will, one, ever own that land that's going to cost them probably $10 million, then two, $18 million to do the roads, then three, get it to that position where, well, okay, so we can't apply for a rural land sharing community now because... Tweedshire Council aren't on the state, state environmental planning policy. It's done. Goes no further. That's it. And 28 million just to get it to that point. It's ridiculous. Anyway, enough said for today. I hope I filled you in on things if you didn't understand them. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.